Hey guys, Peter Miller here from Uncharted Waters on the Discovery Channel, and today we're going to talk about kite fishing. It's one of my favorite techniques and something I've been doing since 1987. You'll see here is the famous kite. They make them in a bunch of different brands for different wind speeds, different spars on the back for different weights. Some have holes, some are very expensive, some are not. And this is one of my favorites. I use the SFE kite. So what we're going to basically do is we're going to fly a kite from this kite rod behind me, and we're going to suspend three of these kite baits from an actual kite line that once we get a bite, it's actually going to pop off and we're going to wind the fish up. The fish will no longer be attached to the kite. So we're going to wind up that slack. We use circle hooks. They come tight and uh, hopefully we'll catch one. But the real goal today is to show you guys what we use and how we set up our kite fishing for a big day out on the water. So the first thing we do is we're going to connect it to a swivel on the main kite rod. So now I'm not going to lose my kite in case it blows out of my hands while I'm showing you guys a few things. And then you're going to see these clips over here, which I'll show you in a minute a little closer. And these are the clips that will be connected to with the other kite rods behind me. Okay, these are release clips that you'd use on an outrigger. Um, anytime you have a release clip, this is what you use. But these are perfect for kite fishing. We're going to suspend these baits in the air and they're going to be one of our best friends getting the baits way far away from the boat. It's a fantastic technique. Okay, so the next thing I'm going to do is just in case we lose the kite, I always bring a balloon. Let's say the line breaks. Let's say you got a bad spot on your kite, on your kite line. So I just tie it to the spar back here. So first, I'm going to take this kite and start letting everything out nice and easy if we can. And there it is, okay. So a lot of people ask about this, like what do you use? You know, what, what, what is this? This is actually a floss loop that holds the first clip in place. So each clip has a certain size hole. This clip is a smaller hole, a smaller floss loop keeps it in check. And these have larger holes, so they slide by. So they slide by, this one slides by. So the first one stays there. So that one is ready. As you can see, we got the kite flying. The first clip is ready. And what we do on a nice windy day is we can set the tension. So this is the tension setting. So we're gonna clip into here, clip into here, and if you wanna make it tighter, you turn this knob to tighten it up on a windy day, and that's really effective. If it's really windy, you want the kite clips tighter. That's gonna hold the bait in position. If you have it too loose, they're gonna pop out. You're gonna to have to wind everything in to start over. So here's the first clip. I'm gonna keep this here for a minute. Here is the kite rod. It's a regular 16 VS reel with 20 pound test. Doesn't matter what size rod you use. These happen to be six and a half feet rods. So when you're fishing and when you're kite fishing, we're always gonna have a snap swivel. I've got a, about a three foot bimini twist, which is a double line to my snap swivel. Next comes the bead. The bead protects the knot from the weight, which is next. This is a half ounce barrel weight. Then I have my cork, which has ceramic guides on either side to make it really smooth when it's ripping through the water at 50, 60 miles an hour, and that's here. Next, we have the stainless steel ring, which we're going to actually clip into the kite clip. So everything's going to be rotating off of this, up and down, up and down all day. When we drop back, we're going to drop right through that clip. So what we do is we take this, which you've which you've already seen these clips, and we connect it to the kite clip. So what I do now is I put my reel in free spool. I put the clicker on so it has a little bit of tension. I'm hooked into my clip. And the next thing I want to do is connect a leader. I make a spool of leaders before I go fishing. Sometimes I'll make 100 leaders because you never know if the bite's going to be great. Um, there's other days I make them as I go. I use 30 pound fluoro, 40 pound fluoro. The fish are biting really well. I'll use 50 pound fluoro. Today we have 40 pound fluoro with 5 0 circle hooks. I have my knot, which I'm going to connect to my snap swivel. It's a simple little knot. Put it through here. I'm going to start letting this out, and these, these other clips are going to stay here. So you can see it going away. This line's going away on my reel. This, the leader is coming off. 
And now I'll stop it here for a second. These leaders that we use are 15 feet. In tournaments, the rules are 15 feet. I've been fishing tournaments since the 90s, and when you get accustomed to fishing a certain way, you don't stray from it. So 15 foot leaders, if you're fun fishing, you could make them 20, 25 feet, I don't, it doesn't matter, but we use 15 foot leaders. So what I've got here is a 5-0 Demon Circle Mustad hook. It's what we use for all our tournaments, depending on the size of the bait. If we have a small bait, which we do today, we use a 5-0, and uh, I like to use a loop when I tie these hooks on. So I pop it in here, and take a little line here and make a little uni. One, two, three, four, five. If you take it like this, you can wet it. A little saliva, I get my pliers. I hook it onto the back of my reel here to pull it tight. Push it down just a little bit here. So I grab the tag end with my pliers and I grab the opposite end with my hand and I pull kind of simultaneously and I shimmy it down. And at the very end, I pull simultaneously on both and you have a beautiful knot. And what I like to do at this point is you can see how great that knot is. I like to cut it off right at the base so you don't have anything hanging off. Next thing we need to do is put the bait on, one of my favorite things. So we're gonna grab a rigging needle out of my box here. I usually bring about you know seven or 10 needles. We take a rubber band, a rigging rubber band. Buy these anywhere. Sometimes we even go to the uh, beauty, beauty supply stores. So now we have an open eye with a rubber band. We put that around the hook. So it's stretchy and we're gonna go through the back or the nostril depending on which position the bait's gonna be in. This particular one's gonna be my long bait, so I'm gonna put it through the back. I'm gonna take it and put it right through his shoulders. Right here, pull it through, come back around, and put it right over the top of the needle. Get rid of the needle, do a couple twists, and then come from behind and go forward on it. Now we have a bait that's ready to roll. I'm gonna drop him in the water, and I'm gonna reel him away. I'm gonna get this out about 60, 70, 80 feet away from the boat, and then we're gonna find our next clip, which is gonna be right there. I'm gonna hook in my second stainless steel ring, and now I'm ready to put a leader on my second setup, which has the swivel, the bead, the weight, and then the bobber, the cork, then of course the stainless steel ring in the second clip. And we're hooked in. Okay, I'm gonna let this out just a little bit, just so I have room to work. So once again, we take the rigging needle with a rubber band, open eye. We put it through the tip of the hook here, and we have the same setup I showed you earlier on round one. Okay, now we go get our bait out of our bucket. Put it through the shoulders. Come around. Go right around the bait. And we twist a few times. Then we go through the back, then through the front, and we throw them in the water immediately. And then we start to go out. The baits are going out nice. And now we're at my third clip. So you can see it right here. This is a heavier, floss loop, much bigger holes on this one, and it stops right there perfectly. So we're gonna let these baits out. We're gonna have a long, a middle, and a short. Right now, the long bait needs a little more line, and everything else is looking pretty good. Okay, here we go. We got our third bait that's about to go out. We're gonna clip in the third setup. This is gonna go into this clip, which is set for the specific tension. So basically when the, when the fish bite, we're gonna actually drop back. We're gonna go into free spool. We're gonna feed it through this thing. And once we engage the reel and we push the drag lever into position, which is only about three or four or five pounds of pressure, once we come tight, it's gonna snap out of here and it's gonna fall down to the water. So it's basically gonna be a fluttering line coming down and it's gonna hit the water. Most people think, oh my God, I lost my, I lost everything. I don't have anything. I said, just trust me, real tight and you're gonna, come, you're gonna come tight on the fish. Just, just keep reeling as fast as you can. And since we use circle hooks, we don't have to set the hook, which is beautiful. These circle hooks catch the fish in the corner of the mouth. It's great for conservation, you're not killing any fish, and then when they get to the boat, you can either cut the leader or try to get the hook out, but we generally cut it. So here it is, here's the third 
ring going in. Okay, I'm gonna let it out. And another thing, we always have it going this way. The line from the boat goes straight through and the bait goes away. You never wanna have it spun the other way because then it doesn't go in and out easily. I'll show you what I mean. This would be the mistake that a lot of people do. If you spun it around for some crazy reason, it doesn't go out smoothly. Look at this. It's tight, it won't go, and everyone's like, oh, I'm stuck, I don't know what to do. So always make sure that you have the ring facing the right direction. There it is. So we've got a long, a middle, and I'm about to put on my third bait, which is waiting for me patiently in my Yeti bucket. I'm gonna hook this guy. Okay, we're gonna put the needle through its back. Go out, come around, put it on top, take the needle, throw it down, do a twist or two, and then go under and through. And then you've got a really feisty bait ready to go out. Good luck, buddy. Put these in free spool, everything's in free spool, clicker's on, and I'm gonna start sending this out. Now that we have three baits deployed, we're uh, looking pretty good. You know, the fish are swimming, they're very lively, they're right on the surface of the water. There's only about a half a foot to a foot a liter in the water, which makes it very hard for a fish to say, hey, that doesn't look right, I don't like it. This is a, just a little bit of line in the water, so it's very stealth, if you will. So, one of my favorite things about this type of fishing is if I get a bite, let's say, on my short, and he decides to go swimming straight into my middle, and my long, well guess what? I'll take my middle, I'll reel him straight up in the air, and guess what, he's out of the way. He's 10 feet in the air. My fish swims through it, I go around here, I'm fighting him off the back, drop this guy back in the water, and I'm still fishing my two baits. That is one of the huge benefits to kite fishing. When you're trolling and you have six baits out, a fish comes up, eats one of your baits, and you hook up, let's say a sailfish or a marlin, you gotta bring everything in. Everybody's bringing everything in, and it is, it gets wild. It, reel this, reel this, bring the teaser, bring the dredge, bring this. And there's no, no more baits in the water. Here, I can fish my three baits, my buddy can fish his kite with his three baits, and then we can have three baits off the other side because we're doing a drift. So we can technically fish nine baits if we're not in a tournament, just fun fishing. The technique is basically all day long, Reeling them up, making sure they're not on the weeds, drop them back down. I popped them out of a weed patch there. Okay, here's my short. I'm gonna reel this guy up, check him for weeds. Perfect, looking good, no weeds on him. My long bait, I just checked him, he's fine. So all day long we trim, it's kind of like a give and take. So this line is running through the steel rings, which are running through the clips, and we're just waiting for something to happen. But it's critical to never take your eyes off these corks. So what I'm looking for right now is either a shape, a splash, come up under the baits, or to maybe see my cork that's sitting like this to go uh, 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 and he starts swimming away. And if he goes south, I've been doing this so long, it's typically a sailfish. If, he go, if the cork starts to go north and the bait's trying to get away north, it's typically a mahi. If it goes straight down, that's hard to call because they'll eat it and they'll just sink with it. So it's really hard to say, okay, I know what it is. So let's say I get a bite on my middle right now, okay? I'm gonna pick it up. I'm gonna start dropping it. Dropping it, dropping it. If he goes south, I'm gonna go around the outside here, and I'm gonna go under this long, and I'm gonna wind, and I'm gonna see if he'll come tight, and then maybe I'll be fighting him off the back of the boat. But the goal is to always keep your baits in the water. Never take your eyes off the baits because that's when the good stuff's gonna happen. This is the electric kite rod. You don't have to have electric. When I first started, we had manual. It was a big spool, so you take a crank and you gain a lot of line. Um, we use a very stout, short butt rod because sometimes it's blowing 20, 30 something miles an hour and you're bringing in a kite that's really far away. So using an electric reel is the only way to do it, especially the fact that we can. It's simple to put an outlet in your boat. This one's connected underneath. There's four outlets on this 37 Invincible we're on and this is a super fast reel. So here's my knob, I got my drag lever engaged, and if for some reason, if your electric isn't working on the boat, what's great about this reel is you can actually use it manually. So we just take it here, we push that, and now we can reel it. 
It takes a long time because the kite's really far away, but you can do it. So instead of doing that, I will push this back. Now we're back in electric mode and the handle doesn't do anything, right? So all we have to do, keep your hands out of the way. We're using braid. You don't want to get your hands caught in that. Very short, stout rod. We hit the rheostat here. We turn it, go nice and easy. If you see a fish and you got to get to a spot, we'll crank it way up like that. It sinks. Hey guys, I hope you enjoy the kite fishing how-to. And now, I hope you enjoy this clip from my TV show, Uncharted Waters with Peter Miller on the Discovery Channel, where we're actually catching sailfish while kite fishing. And until then, I'll be out on the water and I'll see you there. When you get a bite and the line pops out of the kite, you need to take up the slack as fast as possible to get tight. Hooked up, woo! This was that sunset sail we were talking about, Q. Yeah, we were. I thought you were asking me to go on a date on a sunset sail. Pick up your whole uh, rocket launcher. I'm coming through. He's gonna come up, man. He's gonna come up. There he is, jumping. Try to turn the handle faster. I can't turn the handle. <laughs> There he is. Keep it tight. There's a leader. We got the leader. Big boy, that's a big boy right there. He's swimming freaking fast. He's like, he's not even tired. So all of a sudden the fish decides to go 360. He does a pinwheel around the entire 40 foot invincible. And then he goes back under the boat. Thing's gotta be a moose, bro. There he is, finally. Thank you, let's switch. Go, go. For additional content and social media, please visit us at unchartedwaterstv.com.